L'Assemblée va entendre. Now, the Assembly will now hear a statement by His Excellency, Mr. Harry Martial Raja Onari Mampia Nina, Rakoto Arima Nana, President of the Republic of Madagascar. Au nom de l'Assemblée Générale. On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome to the United Nations, to His Excellency, Mr. Eri Martial, Raja Onari Mampia Nina, Rakoto Arima Nana, President of the Republic of Madagascar. And I invite him to address the Assembly. Monsieur le... Your Excellency, the President of the General Assembly, ladies and gentlemen, heads of state and government, Your Excellency, Secretary General, ladies and gentlemen, heads of delegations, ladies and gentlemen, it is for me a source of great pride and a tremendous honor to take the floor at this rostrum at the 72nd session of the General Assembly of the United Nations. I am speaking as President of the Republic of Madagascar on behalf of the Malagasy people, but also I am speaking as President of the Organization of the Common Market of Eastern and Southern Africa, COMESA, and finally as President, Acting President of the Summit of Francophonie. Allow me, Mr. President, to welcome your election at the head of our assembly and to repeat to you our sincere congratulations and our warmest congratulations. Madagascar, together with you, as vice president of this assembly, which brings together 193 member states of the United Nations, but also after having welcomed on the 26th and 27th of November 2016 the 16th summit meeting of Francophonie, can only support the values and the ideals which have brought us together here. We are trying to create together a fair and more stable world made up of development, peace, security, and international law. And so it is that the subject of our debate focus on people striving for peace and a decent life for one and all on a sustain sustainable planet is a challenge to each and every one of us. This precisely because the very raison d'etre of every state is to ensure the well-being of its people and to make possible ways and means for them to make their own choices. Madagascar believes that the choice is clear and obvious. We have placed human needs at the center of our concerns. And so, we welcome the relevance of this topic, and I'm happy to share with you what we're doing and what we're trying to accomplish in Madagascar and have been trying to accomplish since 2014 to give Malagasy's a better and decent life. When I was elected by the people of Malagasy to preside over our country after a long process getting out of a serious political economic and social crisis that lasted more than five years was a great challenge. I had to face a great challenge. This country had a population overwhelmed for five years by international sanctions, and these increased the rate of poverty till, until it represented 92% of the population. There was food insecurity, there was malnutrition, and the logical consequence of that was political and social instability, a lifeless economy, without mentioning corruption and insecurity. <clears throat> but we have decided to meet these challenges because we are basically convinced that Madagascar has no reason to remain poor. We've got great potential, and more than 50% of our people are women, and 61.3% are less than 25 years old. So if each and every one of us makes a contribution, then the optimist that I am truly believes in economic recovery. 
and we believe in economic reconstruction leaving, leading to renewed growth. These three goals, if achieved, can place men at the center of our concerns. Like many of you, leaders and those with responsibilities here in this hall, I'm a born optimist. I'm optimistic about my country, I'm optimistic about my continent, and I'm optimistic also about our collective future. Given these challenges, I believe I believe very much in what Nelson Mandela often said. He said, after having climbed a great hill, one realizes that there are many other slopes to scale. This always seems impossible until is actually done. End of quotation. This statement unquestionably remains valid for each and every one of us. Today, we are now a year away from the 2018 presidential elections in Madagascar. After much hard work and relentless efforts, I can say that Madagascar has reached a new stage. It's a stage that warrants every kind of hope because of the progress that's already been made, both in terms of political stability, although it's still fragile, and from the point of view of the economic and social outlook. In this framework, I can say that since 2016, Madagascar has received 6.4 billion American dollars in terms of investments and global assistance from institutional donors. This makes it possible for us to begin to invest in key sectors of our economy to promote the future of our country. And so it is that building sites have been opened everywhere. We've considerably reduced poverty in our country, and we've acted in favor of certain segments of society which are the most vulnerable. Also a part of these efforts are strengthening our institutions, promoting good governance, creating conditions to calm the political climate, especially by creating the National Council for National Reconciliation, by developing a National Plan for Development to re-energize our economy by truly developing our wealth. The policy to establish basic infrastructures in many sector sectors is beginning to bear fruit. We've been helped by many of our partners who have joined with us in implementing the bases of the National Development Plan, 2015-2019, in the fields of agriculture, cattle raising, energy, and fishing. Finally, we have shown that Madagascar can play a part on the global stage by successfully hosting and organizing regional and international summit meetings, including Tsukomesa, and hosting the Summit of Francophony, of which we have become the president. This year, we, pro we propose to continue projects such as establishing special economic zones in two areas. We've created a pilot digital city to accelerate energy transition, to strengthen our infrastructures, to improve education and public health. Still in the social sector, we are investing in education, training doctors, training teachers, and training engineers. In order to achieve sustainable development number four, the government has established a sectoral educational plan, which is ambitious, so that children in Madagascar can have a quality, a quality education. We're also investing in rebuilding a healthcare system which had been totally ineffective over the years under sanctions. We have thus reopened health centers which had been closed during many crises in order to give a new form of uh, dynamism to this area and to create a whole new country in this respect. Globally speaking, we've established a platform for establishing a new healthcare system throughout the country, and we're, uh, we have a close eye on various illnesses. Madagascar has given itself an epidemiological surveillance system, which is electronic. And this makes it possible for us 
to sur survey in real time 28 uh, uh, potentially uh, potential sicknesses which can be epidemics. The government has also promoted actions, long-term actions, such as launching universal health coverage, reducing maternal and infantile mortality, and this is an important part of health for women, newborns, and children. In the area of nutrition, the budget to nutrition has been increased. Agricultural production has been diversified, water projects, sanitation, and specifically uh, specific nutrition uh, projects to benefit vulnerable populations have been implemented as part of the national uh, plan for nutrition. We are investing also in infrastructure. This in order to create jobs and to accelerate economic uh, growth. We're investing in ports, in highways, in bridges, in airports, and this will bring Madagascar back into the world economy. And we are promoting our tourist industry to create jobs which are decently remunerated and in order to preserve our ecology and biodiversity, which in the world are unique and inestimable. Then in this framework, Madagascar has always tried to respect our international commitments. The commitment, which we entered into in Durban in 2002, to triple the surface that is protected has been honored. Today we have more than 6,900,000 hectares plus areas which, marine areas which have been protected. To fight effectively against poverty, it's imperative that we create in a lasting way wealth for the largest number of people, while at the same time ensuring responsible management of natural resources and by fighting against global warming. Global warming. It is also a matter of urgency that we prepare and implement appropriate lasting development, a low carbon growth, which is inclusive and shared, which creates jobs, especially for young people and children. This must be the economic model for tomorrow. In this way, we can ensure that future generations will have better living conditions in a protected environment. Given climate disruptions and the threats to natural resources and biodiversity and ecosystems, we have no choice but to act swiftly. We must not waste time. And so it is that we support the initiatives of the French president to put into effect and a worldwide agreement on the environment. Now I have an opportunity to thank the Kingdom of Morocco, which has just, within the framework of bilateral South-South cooperation, given Madagascar, which has been struck at the present time by a drought, financial assistance. This is what one can call concrete action. Our agriculture represents 26.4% of our GDP and employs more than 75% of our labor, and this is considered as one of the driving forces of our economy. Today, we are making extra efforts to meet the challenges involved in developing agribusiness. We are engaged in land reform to make it possible for peasants to enjoy ownership of property. We're increasing productivity. We're building infrastructure to give guidance to production so that there can be access to markets and access to capitals and to seeds and to inputs for technological and training services. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, given everything that we've talked about now, the economic prospects of, the, of my country are favorable. Rate of growth is now about 4% and more than 5% it will be next year. This will create economic uh, dy dynamics and will give a new track toward development to improve the population of uh, Madagascar. Our aim is to raise Madagascar to the level of intermediate countries by the year 2030. 
This gives me a chance to bring to your knowledge the fact that we have started reforms to improve the independence of justice and the independence of the Office Against Corruption. We have prepared measures to protect the integrity of our democratic processes without forgetting public security, which is a very sensitive area in Madagascar. Reforms that have been in, uh, commit, uh, entered into make it possible for us to have a rev economic uh, e recovery which is lasting. We're sure that this will be supported by more investments and the prospects for uh, economic growth will be more than 6 percent a year by um, 2020. This can be attained. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, yesterday in his statement at the opening of the general debate, the President of our General Assembly expressed the hope that next year his successor will be able to be proud of the progress that has been made at the 72nd session of the General Assembly as it deals with the challenges of the world, such as the state of peace and security in the world, and disparities and uh, inequality throughout the world, persistent poverty, and the problems of more than 65,000 refugees, international terrorism, human rights, preservation of our planet, etc., etc. The General Assembly already has the tools needed to do this. And now it's time to strengthen these tools and to improve the way they're used by stressing prevention. In this respect, I wish to say, Mr. President, that Madagascar will give you its support. This is also a wonderful opportunity for me to repeat from this wonderful sounding board, which is the United Nations, the appeal made to Antananarivo at the 16th summit meeting of Francophonia. And I quote, our French-speaking community is well aware of its responsibilities. And on the basis of this declaration, we are determined to work for shared growth. We're well to work for sustainable development and responsible development and to establish more just economic, more cooperative economic relations. We will work together. We will exert our influence in international bodies by standing strongly behind the values of solidarity and working together for a more peaceful world, we would call for a more lasting, more inclusive economic development plan to benefit our people." End of quotation. There's hardly any need for me to repeat the importance of investing in young people. Mr. Secretary General, I'm delighted I was delighted to learn yesterday at the first meeting of the Bureau of the United Nations for the Fight Against Terrorism, which was create at, at, created at the initiative of the Secretary General, will be held next year. Madagascar is ready, willing, and able to work closely with the United Nations to eradicate, once and for all, this terrible scourge. I cannot complete my statement without expressing heartfelt condolences to Mexico, which yesterday just experienced another terrible, uh, deadly earthquake in Mexico City. On behalf of Madagascar and my people, we express our solidarity, our compassion, and our saddened condolences to the President, the people, and the government of Mexico, with special mention for all those who have lost those near and dear to them. Thank you very much for your attention, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Madagascar for the statement just made. May I request representatives to remain seated while we greet the Head of State.